Previously on Tyranny of Dragons. Is there someone in charge we could speak with at this keep? She nods vigorously. Yes, Governor Nighthill. He is the one who ordered everyone to seek refuge when the raids started. Then allow us to accompany you to the keep. We can protect you should we run into any more trouble. The woman tightens her shield strap around her forearm and takes a dagger from one of the dead kobolds. Very well. But we must be going now as they will be closing the entrance soon. Good evening, gentlemen. Are you all ready for tonight's session? Ready when you are, Dungeon Master. I've got my notes from last session. Nerd. Are you not taking notes? Don't need them. I've got what the kids call big brain. I remember all the important information worth remembering. Then you'll have no problem in recapping last session for us. You got it, boss man. Check it. Last session, we were on a wagon with an old geezer who launched us into the entrance of a beat-up town. I gracefully leapt out of the wagon like a swan, while the others did a Biden classic all over the dirt. Then this hot-ass broad was like, ooh, help me. She was surrounded by like 100 giants. Then I came to the rescue with my super swollenness and flexed my way through the lot of them single-handedly, making them run like the punk-ass bitches they are. The chick was super stoked on me, and we made sweet love right then and there while the others chanted my name. Then Gurmley got AIDS and shit himself to death. I, I think I'm having memory issues. I don't remember this happening. Does this mean I need to create a new character? Don't worry, Joe. Donald is just messing with us. That's not what happened. Oh, good. I like my character. Someone should. Allow me to recap. We arrived at the edge of Greenest that is being attacked by a blue dragon. Upon arriving, we encountered several kobolds attempting to attack a woman. Between us, we defeated them the last running away. She told us she is heading to the town stronghold, The Keep, where the town's governor, Nighthill, resides. We are now accompanying her there. Very good. And so let us continue on with tonight's session. Wait, I just realized, totally on my own, without anyone pointing it out like on a YouTube comment or anything. My AC is wrong. Damn, roll 20 must have messed up or something. It says 13, but it is in fact 17 due to my unarmored defense. Wow, such an obvious mistake. You sure you've played D&D before? Spend five minutes on YouTube and you'll see I'm all over the D&D world. Now let's get on with it. You are walking on from the entrance of the town, following the young woman whom you saved from the kobolds. She has led you on a path between thick sets of trees, which seem to muffle slightly the sounds of people screaming and the roaring fires. I walk out in front with my sword drawn. I walk alongside the woman. Excuse me, but I don't believe we have exchanged names. I am Bama the Wise, and these are Gurmly Whitebeard, Swollen Old Stomp, and Sharp and Faxbitter. My name is Lillian Swift. She glances over her shoulder for a moment before continuing. You all have such interesting sounding names. You must not be from around these parts. Indeed, we do not know much of this place and even less of what has been happening. Can you tell us all that you know? You can see the expression on her face stiffen. All I really know is a dragon appeared in the sky along with many horrid lizard-like creatures and men in robes. They attacked and ransacked everything and everyone they could find. I glance back when Lillian mentions men in robes. Was there anything more you can tell us about these men in robes? They seemed to be ordering the lizard things, kobolds you called them. They were wearing black robes, but I did see one wearing purple. Purple may mean something, so I walk alongside Lillian. Do you know if these robe wearers are part of the cult of the dragon? She stops walking for a moment. The cult of the dragon. I had heard stories of them, but I've never seen any before. They could be the ones attacking the town, but I don't know for sure. We're wasting time with asking this chick stuff she clearly doesn't know. But this thing with the purple robes, would we know what that's about? I'll need a history check from one of you. I've got high intelligence, so I should roll for this. With your high intelligence and vast knowledge, you know a small shred of information regarding to the cult of the dragon and the significance of those that wear purple. It signifies authority of some kind and potentially a high threat level. You all are fortunate to have such a wise gnome such as myself. The fact that only some individuals wear purple confirms to me that we are indeed dealing with the cult of the dragon. They are like their leaders. Be warned. They are more deadly than the grunts. Personally, I love the idea of a challenge. If we encounter one of these purple wearers, I say we fuck them up. I agree with you, Swole. They won't be a match for us. Lillian, how much longer will it take us to get to the keep? Not much further now. 
We're nearing the edge of the forest, then over a stream, a short walk through the town streets, and the keep sits on top of a hill to the east. As you continue walking, I want a perception check from all of you. Nice. Not bad. Oh, man. Dirty 20. That's good, right? Bama and Swolnald. You both can hear raised voices up ahead, but are unable to make out what is being said. Sharpen. You can hear much clearer than the others and can tell what is being spoken. Gormley. You are unaware of any noises other than your own footsteps. I stop walking and hold my hand up to signal the others. I would have also stopped at the sound of unknown voices. Same here. I would also run forward and throw out one of my perfectly sculpted arms in front of Lillian to prevent her from walking any further. I say quietly to her, something's up ahead. I was out in front of the rest, so would I have noticed that they stopped? Good question. I would say no, considering your back is to them. I say in a loud whisper, Gormley, stop walking. What's wrong? There's someone up ahead. Wait a moment. That's a terrible whisper. What can I hear? You can hear two voices, male and speaking in Draconic. Excellent. I speak Draconic. Same here. Even so, only Sharpen can hear what they're saying. The Southwest has been nearly picked clean. How goes it with the Southeast? More or less the same. I thought this town held better stock. It will not make for a great horde at this rate. Let us continue on. It is time we take the east side. You hear a third person approach. The other two go silent for a moment. You're meant to use your right hand, initiate, and have your palm facing forward. Are you trying to insult us with this poor excuse of a greet? No, sir, I, I'm sorry, but it is five fingers out, correct? Always. Initiate, you just came from the west tree line, but you were assigned to cover the south. Explain yourself. I saw a party of strange looking individuals enter the town. They attacked the South team and killed all but one of them. I stayed in the shadows and decided it would be wiser to move around the forest and come warn my brothers. They could be heading this way. Good thinking, Initiate. Keep this up and someday you may make the rank of Dragon Claw. We will have to inform Mondath of this development. She will be most interested to know of outsiders interfering. But not as much as Kyanrath will be. But now we should move on. Quickly across the stream, break the dam and make it harder for anyone else to cross. You hear the voices growing fainter as the three men walk away. I tell the others what I had heard. There's a lot to unravel there, but maybe we should get moving if they're messing with the stream. And a short while later, you find yourselves on the edge of the trees. All you can see is thick gray smoke. The sounds of screams becoming louder and clearer, as well as the burning of many haystacks and homes. You also notice the sound of rushing water some five feet from you. All the fire must be causing this smoke. We'll never see the keep, let alone reach it. Once we're over the stream, I know where we need to go. We'll be fine so long as we don't separate. She stands still for a moment, examining the stream. The current is heavier than usual. It must have been those men you heard earlier. I think they wrecked the dam, holding back most of the water. I begin to walk across. When you attempt to cross, I want you all to make strength checks. Ah, uh, shit. What's wrong? I have a negative two to my strength. I don't imagine this will go well for me. I could carry you. My character has more dignity than that, Joe. There's no damn way he'll be carried. No, I'll leave it to the dice of fate. I'll go first and I'll carry Lillian across. Yeah, baby, nice high number. That's a success. Right, boss man? Indeed it is, Donald, and you stride across the stream with no concerns. You hardly notice the water at all. If it weren't for the fact it was cold and wet, you wouldn't have known you were walking through it. That's how swollen all rolls. I'll go next. <laughs> that was better than Swannels. You too move across the stream with ease, making hardly a sound as you move swiftly across. I'll go next. Uh-oh, what does a 12 do? It narrowly avoids a fail. You do make it across, but the stream is picked up a little and you stumble a couple of times, getting yourself covered in water. I stand on the other side of the stream and avoid eye contact with the other two, turning my attention onto Bama. You got this! Okay, here we go. Fuck. Oh no. That's not good. Oh yeah, how much is he fucked? Given your size and the increasing strength of the current, Barack, Bama loses his balance and falls onto his back and is swept away along the stream. Help me! Do we really have time to be doing this? We have to hurry to the keep. Are you seriously contemplating leaving me behind, you asshole? How deep is this stream? About three feet. <laughs> really? That's it? 
I'll save you, Bam Bam. And I jump into the stream and grab him. Give me another strength check. God bless him, Mary. You fucking cunt. The current is now too strong for you also, and you too are swept up and carried away. Guys, my swollenness wasn't enough. Please help us. Come on, that's half the party, Donald. I better not regret this. Fine, I run along the bank and reach out to grab them both. I'm going to help as well. As you're assisting, Donald, roll me an athletics check with advantage. You're only just able to successfully grab onto the two in the water. Had it not been for Sharpen's help, you would have failed, and their bodies would have been found some time later, lifeless and still. That was some sweet teamwork. Good job, Sharpen. We just need to work on those scrawny noodles you have there, and maybe one day you two can look as awesome as me. You could just say thanks for helping me out. I just did. Learn to take a compliment. Er, right. How are you two doing? I wipe my face with a cloth. I've been better, but I'll live another day. I do not answer this. Instead, I walk towards Lillian, who I assume is still with us. She is, yes. How much further now? I would very much like to get somewhere to dry off. Lillian raises her arm and points behind you. Although there is still plenty of smoke, you can make out a large structure on what is clearly a hill, roughly 100 feet from where you stand. Excellent. I straighten my hat and begin striding towards it, calling back to the others. Let's go, no time to waste. I guess he doesn't want to acknowledge what just happened, and I follow behind. I'm not letting him forget about it and begin walking towards the keep. I shake my head, but I also head towards the keep. You begin to climb the increasingly steep hill with the thickness of the smoke that continues to linger all around you and the night sky obscured by clouds it is impossible to see clearly. Although there appears to be dim light before you, possibly torches fitted around the outer wall of the keep, you walk towards them until finally the ground levels out. A noise hits your ears, not of screaming, but of angry yells and jeers, snarls and cackling laughter. But as you still cannot see clearly, it is impossible to tell what's causing it, only that it seems to be all around you. Suddenly, you hear the roar of the blue dragon as it swoops overhead, sending much of the smoke into a swirl, temporarily lifting it around you. You find yourself surrounded by a dozen kobolds, spears in hand, and all glaring at you, some smiling. The smoke descends back over you all, throwing you back into imperceptible vision. Roll for initiative. 